Thomas Alive Today presents Corvettes. EJ Corvette's founder Eugene Furkauk began his discounting career in a 400-square-foot loft in mid-Manhattan, New York City. Inventory consisted of well-known brands of luggage household appliances and some jewelry. Discounts were one-third off regular prices. Sales were more than $2,500 per square foot. Furkauk retired in 1968. The company used several retailing innovations to propel its rapid growth. It used discounting even though most discounting was known to be outlawed at the time. Corvettes instituted a membership program a technique from consumers cooperatives that had never been applied to a department store before. It also expanded into suburban locations at a time when most department stores were in central business districts. The record and audio division became an important part of the profits of Corvettes. In 1964 record sales reached $20 million with David Rothfeld merchandise manager for records books and audio equipment described as hard-hitting as the rest of the young driving force behind Corvettes right up to the company's new 37-year-old president Jack Schwadron. Corvette's low-price low-service model was in some ways similar to that of earlier five-and-dime retailers such as Woolworths McCrory's and SS Kresge, but Corvette's was innovative in avoiding the anti-discounting provisions of the Robinson-Patman Act and undercutting the suggested retail price on such expensive items as appliances and luxury pens. Corvettes used membership cards, which it distributed in front of its stores and to surrounding offices, to style itself as a retail cooperative. In doing so Corvettes was able to accept deep discounts from suppliers something that competing department stores such as Macy's and Gimbel's could not do. In fact Macy's and others filed numerous fair trade lawsuits against Corvettes to stop it from undercutting their prices. None succeeded. The lawsuits helped Corvettes by calling attention to prices so low that competitors thought them illegal. Founder Eugene Furkow attributed his idea for membership cards and deep discounts to luggage wholesaler Chaz W. Wolf, but where Chaz W. Wolf made limited or even surreptitious use of these devices Corvettes popularized them by instructing employees to distribute membership cards to any person entering any Corvettes. While the first EJ Corvette store was located between 3rd and Lexington Avenues on 45th Street in Manhattan its rapid growth in the 1950s was helped by its many stores in strip malls along arterial roads leading out of urban centers. This made EJ Corvette ideally situated to meet the demands of the suburbs which grew in the United States during that era. The first of the modern type stores was opened in 1954 a 90,000 square foot store in Carl Place on Long Island which for the first time carried apparel. In 1956 Corvettes had six stores including stores in Philadelphia and Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. By 1958 it had 12 stores. At its peak it had 58 stores. A Corvette's retail floor had cashiers located in individual departments without a central checkout area. Large stores included a full supermarket, pharmacy, pet store and tire center. Corvettes expanded into the Chicago, Northern Virginia, Detroit and St. Louis areas in the 1960s. It successfully disputed the state and local Sunday closing ordinances and laws after a December 20, 1976 internal financial feasibility study created by this contributor then an employee. A copy of that study is still extant in paper form which is available for review independent confirmation and study. Once those barriers were broken many other retailers opened on Sunday. Corvette's decline and closure are variously attributed to inconsistent management failure to focus on merchandise at new, such as appliances, and ultimately attempting to compete directly with the department stores in areas such as fashion, when it had neither the expertise nor the right store atmosphere.
In February 1961 Eugene Furkout brought Jack Schwadron in from Alexander's department stores as general merchandise manager of Ready to Wear. Schwadron was elected vice president and named president of Corvettes in 1964. Upon becoming president of Corvettes Schwadron is quoted saying when we went first to Detroit people thought you spelled our name with a C and we were something you drive but after 90 days our customers and our competitors knew exactly who we were and our profitability has been hampered by the rapidity with which we have opened new stores but we have finally been able to build the kind of base from which we can develop profitably into a nationwide company. Of note was E.J. Corvette's venture into the home entertainment business. The retailer established a rather out-of-context series of high-end audio salons within selected stores. Corvette's went so far as to market its own XAM brand of stereo receivers amplifiers, some manufactured by Harman Kardon and Roland, television sets and speakers. XAM was rumored to be a tribute to the owner's deceased dog Max. In June 1965 Schwadron resigned over policy differences including opposing philosophies on merchandising methods of advertising and public relations among others. In late 1965 Corvettes formed its own home furnishings division and ceased subcontracting furniture and carpet sales. A complex warehousing and distribution network was established. A central distribution warehouse was established in Danville, Virginia. This location received furniture purchased by its buyers located in East Patterson, New Jersey and in turn reshipped individual customer orders based on promised delivery dates. The sold merchandise was then shipped to delivery warehouses in East Patterson and Pensacon, New Jersey and Jessup, Maryland for final prep and delivery. The furniture distribution group was active until it closed at the end of 1977. By 1966 Corvettes had begun to decline and chose to merge with Spartan Industries a soft goods retailer. Eugene Furkauf was eased out of the company leadership and Spartan managers attempted to revive the company. From 1971 to 1979 Corvettes was owned by Arlen Realty and Development Corporation a land development company that used Corvettes 50 stores as a source of cash flow. During this period New York area Corvettes stores advertised heavily on local television using game show host Bill Cullen as a spokesman. In 1979 Corvettes was purchased by the Agash Willot Group of France which initially closed Corvettes least profitable stores and began selling off merchandise fixtures equipment and real estate. In 1980 they declared bankruptcy and on December 24, 1980 they closed all of their remaining 17 stores. In the absence of the U.S. Corvette chain in Canada a discount store chain was launched in Quebec in 1958 using the name Corvette Stores Limited without any affiliation to the American company. The chain still exists today and operates 71 discount stores as of May 2015. The mood is set. The lights are low. Where's the best place to buy a great stereo? Corvette has more of what you're looking for. At Corvettes, you'll find more than just a couple of famous brand stereos. We've got lots, including the newest by Panasonic, Fisher, and Pioneer. You'll find the newest radios, too, from portables to digital clock radios, plus a whole host of tape recorders. And look at these low Corvettes prices. What's the team? What's the score? I need a new TV set. What's the best score? Corvettes has more of what you're looking for. There's more in store for you at Corvettes, from Panasonic's battery portable TV to Sony's new electronic tuning, plus the latest videotape recorders. And look at Corvettes' low prices! So for great values on the latest in home entertainment, Corvettes has more of what you're looking for, there's more in store for you at Corvettes. If you have any fond memories, please indicate it at the comments below. Thanks for watching, subscribe and like.